Tackle organization is critical to your success. You need to be able to find everything quickly and efficiently without having to hunt and pack and try to find everything. That's what we're talking about today. I'm Glenn May with BassResource.com and I'm going to take you through the way that I organize my tackle. Now I know full well that most people, you know, tackle organization is very personal. It is dependent upon your style of fishing, what room you have or what availability you have for storage, whether you're bank fishing, whether you're someone who goes with your friends and fishes out of different boats, there's, there's a lot of considerations that go into it that really, it, it, de it depends on your unique circumstances as to how you want to organize your tackle. That said, there's a lot to be gleaned from figuring out how and learning how other people organize their tackle and you can maybe incorporate some of those things into your style. So that's what I'm going to do, do today. I'm just going to show you what I do. It's not, I'm not saying it's the best way to do things, however, it may spark a few ideas for you. So first of all, let's start off, obviously I'm in a boat so I don't have to worry about toting my gear all around all the time. So it's not portable per se. In here is, is you know, typical inside of a boat, all your storage. What I've got, first of all, is what's, what I need every day, every time I go fishing. First of all, a pair of pliers, in case I'm crankbait fishing, I want to pull those uh, hooks out without hooking myself. I've got a scale. Yes, I do have it readily available because occasionally I do catch fish. <laughs> but digital scale, uh, this is a, a Berkeley, if you guys want to know what that is. It's a bo boga grip style type of a uh, scale. Works great, digital scale. I've got my, this is my hook sharpener. It's actually a knife sharpener, but I use it for sharpening hooks. Have another video on how to sharpen hooks. Look it up. You'll see how I use it. And then, of course, I've got my case here for my glasses. <laughs> getting the, it's getting to the point now where it's hard for me to, especially tie lures that I'm using six-pound test line, especially fluorocarbon. It's hard for me to see all that with it being a thin line. So I carry a pair of reading glasses with me when I need that. All right, so let's get into the tackle. First of all, I have it all organized essentially from hard baits to soft baits, one side to the other. My first three are my crankbaits, and specifically I've got it broken up into uh, three different depths. I've got my shallow running crankbaits in my top waters right here, and those are also my jerk baits, those type of things. In the middle here I've got my mid-running crankbaits. So let's, now I can pull these out, let me show you. These are my, all my shallow running, my jerk baits, my top waters, my things like my devil's horses, pop R's, things like that. Next in the lineup are my mid-running crankbaits. These run down to about eight to 10 feet deep. Square bills, these are, are round bills, all sorts of shapes and colors. I, I usually have them organized by, um, by style, by type. So bomber baits, square bill baits, etc. I have them uh, organized that way. And then finally I have my deeper diving baits. These are the ones that go from about 12 feet deeper. Um, again, same sort of concept. A lot of it goes, you know, where they fit, but because they're bigger baits, you need bigger compartments. These are all my deeper diving baits. All right, so that's how I got my crankbaits. Obviously, if you don't have that many crankbaits, you don't need to, you know, you don't need that to organize it that way, but it works for me. All right, let's go a bit deeper. Next in the lineup, I've got, these are my uh, uh, brush hogs. brush hogs, lizards, that sort of thing, ready to go. I'm gonna start putting some of these back because I'm gonna run out of room. Next are my Senko type baits. These are the you know, plastic stick worms. I have a whole box dedicated to that because I do fish them an awful lot. And then right in the middle of the things are my hooks and weights. This is interesting. This is an interesting box, the way I've, I've gone about doing this. What I wanna show you here is uh, first of all and foremost, what I've done is I've, my jig heads have their own compartments. They're easy to grab. They're open, uh, easy for me to take stuff out because it just you can cram more in a smaller amount of space. And this is really all about efficiency here. The hooks, what I've done is I've taken the hooks. I've, I've, I've got three different hooks here, hook compartments. One is, is my regular worm hooks. My next one are my flipping hooks. And then the following one, is, the third one is for finesse. And what I've done further is I've got these little compartments, these little bags. These little baggies that I have that um, they, you can get at a, at a craft store. 
the little miniature baggies. And what I've done is I've, I've taken the hooks out of the package, I've put them in the bag, and then I've just cut off a piece of the label that tells me what size it is and what kind of hook it is. The reason I do that is several. First of all, in, the, in these Plano type boxes, you're running down the lake, you're even moving from boat to boat or bank fishing, they're, the tackle's jostling around a lot. And hooks, when they're sitting in these, in these uh, Plano boxes, they either like to go over the top of, the, of the, the barriers there and mix and mingle with their friends next door, or sometimes they'll go up underneath and they'll get stuck up underneath there. So that prevents all that from happening. Secondly, and even more importantly, is when it's raining out and you have to open up your box, if you have a lot of hooks, especially ones you sharpen, I sharpen all of mine, you've got exposed metal there that if it gets wet, it's gonna rust right away. And I burned through a lot of hooks just because they, they fell prone to, to rust until I developed this system. And using these little bags, you keep them all nice and sealed up. Doesn't matter if it's raining or not, they don't get wet. So perfect little way to organize it. Not only that, but now I can keep, instead of having a, little, a compartment for each size hook, now I can fit a whole bunch of hooks into one compartment, really easy to get at. I've got them organized from smallest to largest, smallest in front, largest in the back of these compartments. So it's really easy to fix and find or, or find uh, the, the hooks that I need. Same thing with the weights. I've done the exact same thing. I put them in a little baggie and I have them labeled as to what they are for the exact same reason. Works great. I can get to pretty much any kind of weight, any kind of hook. It's all in one box. I've worked really hard to get that compacted into one. So that's my terminal tackle. And then finally we start getting into the, the uh, jigs and the, and the other plastics. Here I have my centipedes. Uh, oh, excuse me, these are all worms, straight up worms, straight tail, sickle tail, ribbon tail, etc. My jig box. As you can see, I've got a lot of jigs. I really like my jigs. I've got my jig trailers in here. I have them organized from finesse at the top to big jigs on the bottom, all the way up to three quarter ounce jigs on the bottom. And then you can see I mostly fish greens and, and browns, so I keep the most popular ones in here. Um, the thing to note about this, once we get into these plastics, let me show you something real quick. Like here's my, here's my spider jigs, for example. As you can see, the compartments aren't completely full. They're not at all. And the reason being is I don't want to, I don't need to take everything I own out on the lake. I want to take enough so I can have, if they're all hitting one size or color, I have enough to carry me through the day. But that's about it. I used to cram these, these compartments all the way full. And when I thinned out the herd and I, <laughs> I only took, sometimes when I get a brand new bag, it says like 10 items in a bag. I'll only put half of them in there. No more than five pieces of a, you know, what comes in a plastic, you know, a bag full of plastics. When I did all that, I, I probably took about 40 pounds of plastics out of the boat. <laughs> I know, it sounded like I was hoarding a lot, and I guess I was. I didn't realize it. But once I went down to that rule of no more than five pieces or so in, in the box or of each, it really lightened up the load. And it also made it a little bit easier to keep organized. I knew when I was getting low right away and how to, when to restock it. So those are my hula... Uh, hula grubs, next right next to it are my grubs itself. Several different types of grubs, sizes and styles. As, as you can see, I'm getting more and more towards the finesse side of things now. Here are the tubes. I love fishing tubes, so I have a little bit more of those than you would see with the grubs, but I've gotten a little bit more on, on some of the more popular colors. I use, a, I, I break them all in rule of no more than five because uh, I use them a lot and I go through them quickly. So I found I need a little bit more than that on some of these popular colors that I use. And then finally I have what I call my finesse kit. This is for drop shot and split shot. And these are my little four inch finesse worms, my little paddle tails, my, you know, the zoom worms, all sorts of little, you know, finesse jigs, these little teeny finesse jigs. This is my finesse kit. All right, so that's, that part of it. I got a few more I want to show you. On the, oh, excuse me. Okay. Couple more things. I have bags. Now, most of these plastics, you can put in planos like that, but some plastics require them to stay in the clamshell so they retain their shape. Rage tails is one of those. So I put my rage tails in one gallon plastic bags. I've got all my craws. 
in one, and then I've got my other miscellaneous, my brush hogs, the lizards, those sort of things in another bag. Easy to keep organized. I have my paddle tail baits and frogs in, in this. I put it towards the back because I don't use those as often, especially I'm shooting this in the winter time, so I'm not going to be using frogs that time of year. And then finally, I've got this little trusty box that's followed me around for years and years and years. It's probably at least three decades old now. This is a spinnerbait box. Those of you who have followed me around know that I like to fish spinnerbaits a lot. So this is by Plano. I don't know if they still make this or they probably have an equivalent that's out now. But I have all my spinnerbaits and buzz baits all organized in here. I have them by type and then by size and color in different rows. All right, so that's about it. Very straightforward way of, of uh, organizing your tackle. I hope I sparked a few ideas. For more tips and tricks, visit BassResource.com. Hey, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And if you want to watch more videos like this, click one of the images on your screen right now. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.